Faker is back, baby. After taking more than a month off of League of Legends, it was alleged he took a step away to really assess his options for the 2022 split. Um, people were saying there was huge offers on the table from North America, a huge offer to join a Chinese super team. I'm talking tens of millions of dollars on the table. But Faker announced he is going to be remaining with T1 for the 2022 split. And this week, he started to spam games in solo queue again, start relearning the game in the preseason, the new items, new champions. And right now, he's obsessed with Vex. Look at that KDA, 5.4 KDA, 71% win rate already. This guy can master the new champion like that. Today, gentlemen, we'll be jumping in the rift and breaking down one of his most recent games. And just quickly, an interesting tweet I saw yesterday, guys. Ashley Kang on Twitter. A visualization of the stats of the LCK's Elite Four mid laners. You have BDD in purple, Showmaker in the blue, Chovy in the yellow, and Faker in the red. And this just goes to show, there's so many different ways you can play the mid lane and find success. You have Chovy, lane dominant, best laner in the world. Completely maxes out the CS difference at 15, XP difference at 15, gold difference at 15, dwarfing the other mid laners. Compare that to Showmaker, complete contrast. Huge KDA, never dies, but also doesn't play for lane, plays towards his team. Doesn't take risks in lane for these first bloods. Completely playing towards his jungler, roaming for his team. Then you have someone like Faker, most first bloods very very aggressive in that lane doesn't really dominate the lane completely he dies a lot for the team uh but these stats guys it just goes to show these are great mid laners all of them i wouldn't floor their their styles they're just simply different styles but it's going to be interesting to see what faking can get, can get done um with this lineup he's got for the 2022 split in the lck but without further ado let's finally jump onto the rift and break down one of his vex games Today we have Faker on Vex up against Yone in the mid lane. Vex is very underrated. We're going to be seeing a shit ton of her when pro play resumes in January. If I were to put a tier list together right now, you'd be seeing Vex, you'd be seeing Victor, you would be seeing LeBlanc, I think is very good. Yone, Irelia, all playable. Yasuo, flexible if you have a Gragas or any type of knockups in your team. Um, what other mid laners are very good? Twisted Fate, Zoe are playable. Syndra is playable at the moment. Um... God, I, miss, I feel like I'm missing a couple, but these are the top mid laners at the moment in pro play and in high um, elo play. And Faker into the Yone. Faker running the teleport, Yone running the ignite and that lethal tempo. So Faker starts with the E. By the way, guys, E start on um, Vex in lane with your stun, with your electrocute. It's a free proc, and you're gonna, you're gonna, almost nobody beats you level one on this champion. It's actually crazy. You can see Faker. He stuns up. Q, weaving the autos, need to make sure Yone flash Q's in. First Blood's Faker, it's a one for one, but Faker has the teleport advantage. So he's gonna teleport back in. Level one backs, I mean, if you die, you get that boost, you're gonna be going out really fast. I don't think he's gonna miss too much. And this is taken from Faker's stream, a link in the description below, Faker's been streaming. I think he has like, he has a certain amount of hours that he has to stream per month in his contract, in his multi-million dollar Contract, so I, you already see him spamming a lot of games on stream. A lot of these orgs. The way it usually works is like in their contracts, they have a minimum of hours they have to require to stream. But the teams are able to make really insane deals with these big sponsors. You see Samsung at the bottom left. These big sponsors pay huge bucks for the team. For not only the brand deals, but also that the players stream and promote these brands in their fulfillable minutes and hours and whatnot. So also Twitch make deals and stuff like that. Like there's a lot of things that go on. Faker, probably one of the... Do you reckon he streams... Who streams the most out of any pro player? It's probably Yankos, right? That guy puts in ridiculous amounts of hours. You see Faker. This is taken from his point of view, guys. So if you have motion sickness, probably stop watching. Um, Faker has some of the highest APM and the most F key toggling and looking around the map. Uh, probably the most. Like, he is one of the most... Oh, oh. Unpleasurable players to watch from his point of view. In contrast to someone like Chovy, very smooth, very controlled, always kind of centered on himself. He's not really looking to side lanes anywhere near as much as Faker. I would love for someone to do some deep dive analysis on how much Chovy actually checks like other lanes and other things compared to someone like Faker. And I know there's tools that you can do that to track your eyes and track the F keys. So. I'm not saying one way is better to play than another. Always just got to do what's comfortable for you guys. As we still have the flash. E, Q. We better get the auto. W. Nice little snapback by this Yone. 
Bod hovering. Jarvan hovering. Oh, wait, oh, I say it so much. Mid lane is 3v3 to 2v2. You gotta play towards your jungle, you support. It's done. Oh. This champion is absolutely cracked. See, Talia has to learn the flash. We got two cookies. Stun is up. Jarvan hunting. That is so unlucky. And what do you guys think about the release of Vex? I definitely think... I think it's a good champion overall. It's kind of an under-hyped under release. Like, there's not much hype around it. But I think as time goes on, and as we start to see some outplays in pro play, um, with the ASP resets, I definitely think it's going to become a very popular champion. Um... It's definitely worthwhile putting time on. It has so many different use cases. Like the kit is so useful when you master it. So great mage to pick up. I find myself like, cause I play, I, I feel like it's for me, it, it's kind of, I don't know what it feels like. It kind of feels like Ari Zoe-esque or something. It kind of just fat, like fit, fitted, fit straight into my play style. And this just seems ridiculous. We'll have to flash it. Baker, completely greeted. I don't know why he was so far up there. Maybe he's trying to bait for the Bard. Wave's in a really bad spot. Hits back. Oh yes, Bard. You got to ignite. Oh, I'll be. Dorks. Control ward. Speed back into lane. Slight CS lead. Doesn't really mean too much. The wave is actually phenomenal. The Bard didn't allow the Yone to shove it out. Great guy. Speed back in. Currently, highest rank mid laner on the server is Knight, rank four. Making his way up to the rank one spot. Still praying for the matchup. I want Bjergsen versus Chovy or Faker. I'd love to do that review this week or next, but Bjergsen kind of struggling at the moment. Around about 100 LP masters in Korea. Very hard division to climb out of. I should know best. I played hundreds of games that. Lost. I think I, I had a... I'd never had a grey hair in my life until I went to Korea and got stuck in Masters and played 20 games a day. I swear to God, I, 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 like, I have grey hair because, because of that. At only 26. It's the R. Gets the reset. Here we go. Watch how he plays with the R. Not going to bother. Should just use it for wave clip. Can he get anything done, bot? Good. No. Very good. Very hot. No plate mid, though. Double Yone CS, my god. Nice. It's the Dark Seal. Making his way towards that Lost Chapter buy. I'm wondering what mythic he goes. Ludens is always nice for that penetration. I feel like you don't need the... Um, the Shattered Queen, so it's probably going to be Everfrost or Ludens this game. When you get Sorks, the Ludens usually make sense because you can synergize it with the pen. Getting that much flat pen. It's going to allow you to do true damage until anyone gets any type of MR. Roaming, always your best bet on um, this champion. The thing with the R is that you can like, you don't have to fully commit to a roam. You can kind of do like a half roam and just throw it out on cooldown. Damn pings, playing it safe. And I'm wondering how T1 is going to go this split. For me, I don't think Darmon's got what it takes anymore. I think it's going to be either... I mean, there's a lot of stacked, there's a lot of stacked LCK teams. I like the look of Gen G. Um, T1's not bad. I think their top laner... Who did, they, oh, who did they run out? I think they got Zeus, their trainee, as their starting top laner, right? Um, they got Ona, Baker, Yumiyushi, and... What support did they get? Sure, I'm trying to think. Did they keep Kyria? 
I think they did, yeah? Anyways. LCK should start in January. W Max usually after Q for the Vex. Come on, I want to see some action. Thank you, Talia. We have the R. R is flashed. Gets the Talia. Slowly kiting back. Q picks up the Yone, and now all the autos. Careful, careful, careful. But on the level 5, looking for the stun. Doesn't land it. And with these E's, guys, you just... Oh, shit. You're dead. With these E's, you just max range put it. And a lot of the time, the hitbox is very strange. You can pick anybody... Oh, this is bad. You'd be surprised at how many E's you'll land just by throwing it at max range and then following it up with the Q. And try and get an auto. If they engage, hit that W. The combos are very simple on Vex. You don't... I honestly think you can pick this champion up in 4-5 games. It's not a hard mage to play at all. The only thing that you need to really master is the R's. When to commit and when not to commit. You need to be pretty switched on about that. As it looks like it's going to be an Everfrost setup. Decent into a short range comp. Everfrost always going to get value. Obviously if they have a chance... If, if they have a full like long range comp... And he has like a Jinx, um, Nazir or something like, or Syndra or something crazy in the mid lane with a lot of range, or in Jace top or something, or Graves jungle. Like, Graves kind of short range, but like the Everfrost value is going to be so much more into short range comps than into those type of long range comps. It just makes sense, right? That's how I all of the time make my mind up, and I actually really like it. I like I, I like the change in Mythics. By Riot. I think we do actually have the diversity now where I can switch up my builds for specific comps and scenarios rather than just going the same build every game. If I need a little bit of damage reduction against like if they have Talon Z or something, I can go Shattered Queen. I'm hard snowballing the Ludens, like it it's nice. Good job, Riot. Dragons are still a complete shit show though. I think Chemtech Soul has a 91.5% win rate, if you didn't know. Yo, if you get that soul, it's a free dub. Roaming. If we land the R, if we land the R, it's a kill. R. Oh, oh doesn't hit. EQ. We gotta shut down 200 extra gold there on the ass. So. And I feel like Vex is a very good mid game champion. From level 6 to like level 13. I feel like late game your damage falls off significantly to compare to other champions and some mages like Victor and stuff, but... Overall your mid game and your follow up is very good. But if you're the sole damage dealer late, it's sometimes really hard. To play a little bit more utility. Not wasting the W. Maxing that after Q. And you see the ultimate. Only like 90 seconds, right? So don't be, don't be too scared to throw it. Oh. Nice, nice, nice. Everfrost, TP back. Good go, stopwatch. Goes amp tome. Wants the damage. I respect it. Stoppy is not bad. Getting the hourglass for when you use your R and engage into the enemy team, then using the stopwatch sometimes is very okay. useful on Vex. And Faker. Okay. I'm seeing mostly cosmic drive right. seconds for most of them. Oh my. God, what are they doing? A good fake to watch, like, <laughs> like a robot. Completely, he's like just wave clearing and just watching at the same time. Jesus Christ, bro. And I'm still trying to work out. It's awkward to get these cues to one shot the back lines. I'm wondering if like a minion demon or something like that would help out for Vex. Because level nine clear for me, it it seems like the minions will always get to one health. TP. Please hit the R. Please hit the R. Please hit the R. R. Bang. R again. Everfrost. Wait, 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 wait. R. Takes it. Puts the Q in. You see how he plays that? Very oh, slow, nice. very controlled. You have so much time with your R. You have another one here. 
You reckon he's going to take it? I'm going to say he doesn't. You have so much time. Don't rush into it. Don't panic. We got enough here. Probably going to get our way towards the uh, cosmic drive. Cosmic Drive? Hourglass. What's the move? Okay, he gets the stopwatch and the Seekers. Mm. Took a while to decide what he wanted there. I think he debated getting the Shadow Flame. I agree that the Shadow Flame's not that good. It's good, but if unless you have the Ludens to sync all the flat pen, it's not that good. It's much better when you have the Ludens to get the flat pen synergies all linking up. Especially when you have, like if you have Lucidity Boots and Everfrost, like don't, I don't, I really don't like the item. You're not getting enough flat pen to really make it worthwhile to get the true damage. Better of getting percent pen from like a void or something in the mid game. That looks like it's such a disgusting combo. I think he could look for this. Yep, ah. Oh. Yes. You. It's juked. W, stoppy. Everfrost coming up. I think he's gonna die. Oh my god. I think enough. Wait. Everfrost? Yes? Oh my god. 10 and 2. Played that so well. Kind of, I mean, well played to the Bard. Clutched it. Got him out of <laughs> through that Bard. What a champion, bro. Um, yeah, well played. You guys are seeing the power of Vex. It's going to be so hot for pro play. Can't wait. Big difference between these, like an amateur Vex and a good Vex right now. I feel like amateur Vexes just completely whiff and int the mid game. You can just bait them out. You get, you headbutt the ultimate, you have a stopwatch and they just R in and you just bait them into your whole team. I have the Hourglass, 10 stacks now completed. And he is gonna end up going for, he'll probably go for Shadow Flame. Knowing how I call items, he'll probably just switch it up and go Horizon Focus. I guess the shielding into the Rakan, into the Yone won't be bad. Camille as well. Ah, landed. Wait for the snapback. W's in. Everfrost. Q. Has another R. Whoa! Was he trying to predict a flash? Sweep the autos. Q goes wide. Finally, you can see those backline. The Q clearing that backline wave. Very easy champion to see that CS with. You should be looking at at least seven to eight CS per minute. I don't care what MMR you're at. But normally, the Dojonjade player with Gago and Vex is good. It's not good enough. I'd love to clear another wave and get Mage Eyes. Counter, yeah, counter. Eat. Gabi. Not timing those Qs right. Close. And boys, if you made it this far in the video, I'm interested to see in the comments below, who are your top four mid laners in the LCK for next split? Oh, I'll copy. For me, my number one mid laner, Jovi. I think Jovi is the number one mid laner. Um, then I think Showmaker. Then I think... Honestly, guys, I don't know. BDD is pretty bloody good. Is Faker still top four? Maybe four. Maybe not. I think, am I disrespecting him by saying that? I don't know. It is so hard to... The problem is, number one, like best mid laner is subjective. Like we saw in those stats at the start of the video, 
All the mid laners have different stats and they have different strengths and weaknesses. And depending on the meta, obviously some strengths and weaknesses are going to stand out and perform better than others. One tap. Gets the Rakan. Gets the blue buff. Good guy Jarvan. Got the teleport, so we head into the side lane. I'm jacked to the tits. Around the translation. Very fed. Australian translates. Gets the horizon. Gets <laughs> the horizon focus. Gets shadowy. Shadow, 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 shadow. That's good, good, good. Surely with flash, with hourglass, mm. everything up, the Magi's angle would have been so perfect. Only 350 AP, 20 minutes in with 14 kills. Back in my day, you'd have like 600 AP by now. Has a lot of utility though. Everfrost active, Hourglass, the Shadow Flame on the shields. Pretty gross, isn't it? This R hits, I reckon, ooh, doesn't end up using it. Still has another 10 seconds. Ready? Garvin just starts up the the Baron that short. This poor Kimmel. We still have that Everfrost active. Forces the flash out to Talia. Jarvan is so good in Talia. Baker. 20 seconds on ultimate. Look at the Fiona in the bot side. Just working away at those towers. And he really is taking no risks. I like the way he's playing these fights. I don't think it's... It's not really necessary, is it? Five, four, Everfrost hits. Oh my god. We have got R now. Wait for the win wall. Get the R reset. Looking for it again. R hits straight in. Another R hits. Oh my god. Triple kill 19 in two. Can we get a quad? Do I see a quad? I think I see a quad. No stun yet. Flash WQ. Gonna get it. Flash misses. Can't get it. Yeah. That's unlucky. Just mistimed it. He was hungry for it too, you could tell. 2,800 gold in the sack. Looking at 3,000. Please, please buy a Medjai, sir. Make me happy. You're probably better off just with a straight out void stuff than the Magi's numerically. But it's just the principle. We'd do a death cap and then last item Magi's it. That'd be kind of weird though. You don't want to do that. Yep. Ah, finally up. Oh my god. Gets it. Waste the Yone. Oh yes. Wait for it. Straight. Oh, the wind wall. Not playing anything too aggressive, just sitting back, throwing shit out. Probably can set up the... Oh my god, never mind. No flash, remember? Can Bard land anything? E, Q, just hit 620 on that Q, you can see. Stun lands, and we're gonna try and ever... I like the Everfrost combo, actually. It seems as though it's just permanent. It's just perma-stun. Crazy. Get to 20 kills. That fake out looking a little bit nutty, hey? I'm just... Pr like, every... Uh, everything just wants me... Wants, wants, wants him to win Worlds before it, his career ends. Again. Nothing would make me happy, I don't think. I would die a happy man if I, if, if, just if I knew that the goat of my sp elite sport finishes on a high. 730 AP, we have death cap now. Sitting on that 10 stack Dark Seal for a while. Hmm.
New Ezreal build in Korea, by the way, guys. You go Crown of the Shattered Queen, the AP Mythic, on Ezreal to prevent damage coming in. Do you understand? This new meta is starting to really make me question the game. It's low damage, high survivability, I guess. You get the mana. It kind of does make sense if you start to really think about it. And of course, of course Korea is always like the first. It always seems like to be the first region to start inventing these new strats. That double, do you guys remember the double um, mana item Ezreal? You get mana Mune and Archangel. Yona. Split spot. They'll set up the Drake. Drake. They'll set up the Nash and then look for the Siege. Definitely should be endable off this Baron Siege. If they don't, I'd be disappointed. TP is online. Baker thinking about rejoining. Doesn't choose to do it. If he had Flash and Ultimate, I'd say he would have, but not worth it at this point. God, the utility on a good Bard. I actually usually ban Bard in high elo, by the way. I just noticed in every every game or every second game there was a bard bard mm. one trick, and they just permanently roamed mid, and it pissed me off. And I took away their bards, and then now they're hard stuck diamond. Coincidence? Well, Probably not. They they they're, they're bad players. They're a lineup champion that has a stupid kit. It's like Talon jungle mains. <laughs> Flash in 40. I want to see one more team fight, please. Probably can't. I mean, could Penta, but like... Let's see, let's see. He wants to try and test out the Yas... The... Oh, he lands it. Gets the GA. We have to kill this guy so quick if we want the reset. We get the ultimate reset now. Ult goes in. Does it hit? It, of course, does. Moves in, gets the double stun, gets another kill. 23 kills to his name. Ops the stoppy for fun, and that is going to be GG, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to, for today's video. Had fun making it. Mm. Been a blast. 23 kill banger. Catch you boys on the next one. Peace.